Okay, this one didn't go as smooth as I thought it would. Happy Father's Day is right there. Right here. Here we go. Happy Father's Day, everybody. See, women make a big deal of their day all the time. We're supposed to do all this special. We get nothing, right? We get nothing. So I thought I would bring you guys little balloons. <laughs> remind you guys how impressive you are. I, I know I have told many of the dads here today. May today the wife make a nice dinner. Do some back massage, some food massage. Right? No, oh, we got really quiet here. Is that a sore? Is that a sore? Is that a sore subject in the home? Okay, all right. Well, we, 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 I know that today Laura will not be doing all of that either. So I got you. Hey, uh, uh, happy Father's Day. It is, uh, it, it is an important day for us because I believe in God's sovereignty that He has put us together, men, men and women, in order to lead our home, in order to come together as one, in order to lead our children in the will of God and to be leaders in the world. It is not any special than any other day other than the fact that today we highlighted, the, the, uh, highlighted that God has chosen men uh, to be part of his creation. And that he has celebrated with us that which only we can do to take responsibility before God and before others that God has called us to lead. So may we lead well. Uh, may, guys, may the guys lead well. Uh, not only at home, but in your workplace, in our community, uh, because God is counting on us. Uh, I have a couple of announcements that, that, I, that I need to extend from what I was saying. I think one of them is VBS. Is, is really, we are really excited about VBS. We often have several kids uh, uh, attend VBS. We are expecting the same this, this year come around. We're going to have live animal. Laura signed me up to be one of them. I don't know what I will be, but I, you know, uh, there'll be live animal. We're going to have a camel. We're going to have donkeys. We're going to have different things. So I think it'll be a, a, a good time for the kids and, and for you who are volunteering. And maybe you haven't uh, made your mind volunteering yet. There's still time to do that. We're still needing help. And part of the help is we need help on this next Sunday, right after church, to help set up some things. So if you have some time next week uh, to set up, maybe you're at home uh, and you know you'd like to be part of VBS and would like to be part of uh, you know of that that event the whole week, you can still sign up and maybe you can show up here on Sunday and help us set up. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be great. And I think uh, you should um, uh, continue to. Uh, to pray and to think about VBS. Uh, one other thing that I think is important for us is that I had a meeting <clears throat> a few weeks back with someone that you have uh, would remember. Uh, her and her husband was doing a, 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 the Cobbs, Laura and Derek Cobb. They were doing an interview for, uh, uh, we played a video for a few weeks here of her and her husband talking about how important uh, small groups are. She came to my office a couple of weeks ago and, and talked about uh, this, this uh, program called LifeWise. Uh, and and uh, I will not do a good job explaining it. We have a video that I would like for you to, uh, to listen to. And I think this uh, is worthwhile our time thinking, praying, and pondering about it. Uh, but most important, partnering with it. I was just in a meeting this week where pastors were there. And the church in Delaware County is involved in promoting this. And I don't think it should be different with Delaware Christian Church. You know me, I don't promote everything. Uh, there's a lot of things that I, I, I don't, I'm not so sure about. But this one I am sure about. Given what we do at DCC with our uh, preschool and our daycare that we have through the week. And what we, with the family ministry effort that we have, I think LifeWise is an important thing for us to pay attention. So I'd like to play the video and then we'll talk more about it once it's done. When we gathered in my living room to really pray, how could we reach kids in our own community? We learned about LifeWise, heard it was an option, and said, let's do it. As a former principal, I knew that there was a connection lacking in children's lives about who they were. And the gospel message is central to breathing life into who they are as individuals. 
our initial response was like a lot of people, is that really legal? Can you really do that? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can do it. We're an example of that, we're doing it. We reached out to the LifeWise Academy folks and they showed us the process to walk each step. And here we are with our first launch, um, over 100 kids. excited about what we see happening here in New Albany. Over the last year, we've seen a group of churches come together with the commitment that they want their children in this community to learn the gospel. All of our kids are hearing about Jesus, about the gospel. They are hearing all about this ultimate sacrifice that God paid for us to give his only son. We have communities that are popping up all over Central Ohio, all across the state of Ohio, and all across the nation. Why not in your community as well? So, so, so I encourage you uh, to go to lifewiseacademy.org and, and to explore more about that. At, at this point, uh, it's only focused on Bakai Valley High School and Bakai Valley um, uh, schools district. Uh, I know that there is an effort uh, to bring that to Delaware School District. So uh, we have all, I know churches and Christians always talk, we get to be put uh, Jesus back in the school, uh, prayer back in the school. Uh, I don't know where you land with all of that. Uh, and if that is, if that's something that you want, I think that's important for us. I think supporting and knowing and advancing this cause will be important. So we at Delaware Christian Church, we're really, really behind this effort from LifeWise and from the people in the Bacai Valley, which Laura is one of the individuals that are helping uh, launch that. Launch that. Uh, we just want to do this. We just want to support it. So I don't know what else to say other than that. And uh, if you do not know who Laura Cobb is, I'll introduce to her at some point. I'll make her stand up and come up front. And then I was going to get a punch in the face. And I'm not going to do that. So anyways, I'll, I'll hook you up. Uh, but if you... Uh, if you um, Scan the QR code in front of you. You can get more information about life. Why? Uh, cool. All right. I already lost a few minutes from my sermon, but it uh, was all worthwhile. So let's do, see if we can do this as fast as we can with my good English. Let's do it. All right. So we are on the third week of the quest, the sermon series uh, that, that is focused on financial health that honors God and, to, and that blesses people. The, you know, usually when churches are talking about finances, it's usually about generosity. You got to give, you got to give, you got to give. And this is not about that whatsoever. It, it is not. It is about your life. It is about your finances. And we cover topics that usually churches don't, don't necessarily cover, right? The first week we talked about the importance of budgeting. So in budgeting is important. That, that you'd set up, or that you know your bills and what is coming and what is going and where, where your money is coming from and where his money is going to. So budgeting is very important. So we talked about that on the sermon. And then on Wednesday night on a workshop, we talked about the importance of, 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 uh, of budgeting. And, and thus the Hostetler even gave us a little, bit of a, uh, a, a, a little bit of worksheet that you could work out of it. In order to try to figure out your budget, he talks about the importance of it. Then that was the first week. The second week we talked about uh, the importance of uh, debt reduction, right? Uh, we talked about the dragon. There is a dragon in, in, in our lives that is keeping us from fulfilling our quest and that dragon dragon is called that and he's uh, uh, just trying to uh, uh, just to sweet talk us into falling more and more into debt uh, which will keep us from finding that financial health that financial freedom that we're all looking forward to this week we're going to talk about two other subjects that is very important on the process of financial freedom on fi having financial health which is saving and investing Saving and investing. But here's the thing though. Saving and investing is a couple of steps farther into the journey. It's important that you start with your budgeting. It's important that you figure out that aspect of it. It is also important that you figure out the aspect of that reduction. Or how you had some kind of idea about how to do that. In order to be able to save and invest effectively. 
If you want to know more beyond the Sunday morning, uh, today, the sermon, I would encourage you to come Wednesday night at 6 30 right here in Dusty Hostetler, which is a financial advisor. He, he's the one who has been guiding us and directing us and teaching us about the, the details and the intricate parts of all of that. But, so let's get into it. Uh, what is one of the quests that you have gone to that require you to be prepared? What are some of the things that you have gone into it, that, a trip or, 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 or a, a journey that require you to be prepared? I remember being 12 years old, my dad taking me and my brother to a fishing trip in the Pantanal in Brazil. The Pantanal in Brazil is like, it is like this big swamp. You can't just drive into the middle of it. So, right? so we drove for a couple of days. We parked the cars at this specific location. Location. And then we got these uh, bags. There are so many bags we put on our shoulders. And my, me, me, my brother, my dad, and the other guys who w went with us, all we had a lot of luggage. And we had a couple of one little car that I remember having that we would carry it around, that we would carry. And we walked for two days to find our, our destination. It was hard work, and, and here's what I, I don't know about it, but now looking back, I know what happened is that my dad and those guys prepared themselves big time for that, for that trip, for that journey. They just doesn't woke up, they didn't just wake up one day and said, you know what, let's go fishing in the Pantanal, and got us get our car and walk three, two days and stay there for like two weeks without preparing. They took food, they, we took extra clothing, we took ex, ex, extra uh, equipment in order to be able to last the long trip, to last the whole trip, and to do it well. Now maybe as an America, you, you, when you think about a long journey, a long trip, you think about the westward expansion, right? Uh, it, it is something that uh, uh, most Americans knows about and, and have heard about and have even studied in history, right? Have you ever really thought about uh, uh, what those early pioneers uh, uh, faced? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, Consider that it was a 2,000 miles journey from Missouri to the West Coast, right? 2,000 miles. Can you imagine how long it would take to get there if you were bumping along two miles an hour on a covered wagon, a couple of horses and a wagon and you just drag them around. I mean, I drove a thousand miles not to one time going down to Orlando in 2000, I don't know, 15, 16. And it was terrible. Thousand miles on a car driving, right? With kids and, and just kids. And uh, it was like a lot. Can you imagine 2,000 miles uh, in a bumpy road up and down mountains, desert, and, uh, they had cross and rivers that they have to cross and the dangers of outlaws and Indians and wild animals and storms and disease that they had all they had to contend with to be able to do that. I mean, that kind of a trip is not just for anyone, right? That you got to be tough. You got to have, you, you can't be softy or pansy as we call it our days, right? You, you can't be that. You have to be strong. You, you can't be like Pastor Sam that is 30 degrees outside. He's crying, right? It, 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 it can't be like that. You got to be strong. Those people are tough as now. The story tells us that one of the things that they had to ensure uh, to their success uh, is that they had to stock, stock supplies. They had to have plenty of supplies to last the trip. They knew that there was a point called the independence in Missouri. And once they passed that part to Oregon, they, they, will not be able to, uh, they will not be able to find anything else to buy. They had to restock then or else they will not make it. And as you read it about it, you see what they had on their wagons. Like they have 120 pounds of flour in canvas sack. They have 25 to 75 pounds of bacon. I kind of like that. But I'm thinking, right, how do you keep so much bacon uh, from spoiling in a wagon? How do you do that? I don't know. See, I'm thinking about things that doesn't matter, right? Maybe they had a refrigerator in the back of the wagon. I don't know. Uh, 50 pounds of, of ground corn, 50 pounds of rice, 25 pounds of sugar. They say that the wagon, a wagon with a family wagon would, would uh, be as heavy as 2,000 pounds, which was three fourths of, of, of the weight of the, and three fourths of the weight of that wagon was, would, would be on food. 
We, we have uh, Samuel Jackson uh, 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 on Capital One, a commercial telling, t asking us the question, what is in your wallet, right? Back in the day, they asked like, what is in your wagon, right? That's how, that's how it was. And so for, for those people who wants to achieve financial health and, and the owner's God, I think those early uh, pioneers uh, present a valuable lesson, uh, uh, going on a trip long and being able to prepare to fulfill that trip, I think teach us some valuable financial le uh, lessons. You you can't go on flying by the seat of your pants, right? You must plan carefully, which means you must save and you must invest for the long haul. Oh, Pastor Sam, what are you talking about this here? Let me tell you why, why. Because life is unpredictable. Life is very unpredictable. You do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you have to have a game plan for tomorrow. Right? It, it, it is true. The economy can go down. I don't want to get in problem here. But, you know, as we have seen before, we could put gas at 30. Now we got to put gas at 90, right? So things can change. And planning and saving and having a little investment can help us on the long run to deal with the unexpected things of life, circumstances of life. Maybe you are a healthy person, but out of a sudden you're not feeling good and you find out you have some sickness. Maybe your employer have to cut some people and you are in one of the list. And, and maybe you, there was some kind of accident that happened in your life, on the life of someone you love. And you, you need to be able to, 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 to uh, deal with the financial consequences of that. The only way you can do that is if you have saved and you have invested. When something had bad happens... And it will, it, it, and unfortunately, it does happen in life. You need to be financially prepared. So I, I want us to think uh, for the remaining of our time here about, uh, about saving and investing. The two things you can do to prepare for whatever you may find in your future. So first, let's think about saving. Let's think about saving. And I think saving is, it is so biblical and, and it is so in our face that even nature teaches us about that. Nature itself teaches us about the importance of saving. I, I think Proverbs uh, chapter uh, 30 verse 25 puts it in that context for us, right? It is so important that even, even nature tells us that ants, they aren't strong, but they store up food all summer. How many of us haven't seen a little trail of ants and they are holding a little cracker bigger than themselves or a little piece of leaf bigger than themselves, right? Uh, Americans don't like uh, ants. They, 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 uh, we know they're pests or something. Laura is freaking out about ants. You know, in Brazil, we eat them with sugar. Like in our sugar, our sugar is full of ants. So you got like a lemonade that comes with little black stuff on it. It's sugar. You know, and, and, and we say it's good for your eyes. It's good for your eyes. I grew up with my, my grandma says like, grandma, there's ants in the juice. It's like, it's good for your eyes, son. So I have a perfect eyesight right now. So, uh, you know, it, it is a true story. But back, back uh, you know, I remember seeing those ants getting a leaf or get a crumbs like, they save for the future. It is not only ants. I mean, maybe you're more familiar with squirrel, right? The, with the squirrel. Uh, uh, squirrel, is, I'm saying it right? Uh, maybe not. Uh, 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 squirrel. Maybe not. Uh, you know, anyways, the squirrel. You know what I'm saying? That little animal that Rosie, my dog, runs after every time you open the gate and goes up the tree and, and uh, makes weird noise. Uh, they are rodent, which means it belongs to one of the most despised species on the planet. Most people hate rodents, right? However, this, uh, the, 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 the squirrels gets off easy because it has like this nice big bushy tail and everybody thinks they're cute and, and the whole thing. You know? And so when you see a squirrel running around in your backyard, that's a, a very good chance that he's uh, collecting and hiding and bearing uh, some food for, for the future, for the winter. So they have something to eat when, uh, when the winter comes and the harsh parts of life come. There's a phrase out there that Americans say all the time, is curling money around, away, Sk right there, that's the word, curling money away. Is that Curly, yeah, that's you guys say that, don't you guys say that? Yes, yeah, you guys say that all the time. And so, a uh, man, you might have heard a guy say something like this: "I have been is curling some money away so I can buy some Jordans." Maybe you have heard something like that. So, do you know what that means? That means that that guy is talking about saving some money to buy something that is very good, good for the heart, good for the foot, is a Jordan. 
Everybody needs to save. Everybody needs to score some money away because we know that difficult times are ahead. So even if you are in good financial shape right now, you know that the things can change and change quickly. So you need to start scurling some money away. For me, it's, uh, I did this on first service. I probably shouldn't do it in second service, but heck, let's do it, right? We are in the middle of it. Uh, uh, for me, it's nice curling money away. It's cheap monkey uh, money away. Cheap monk money away, all right? Like my, my in-laws, they live in an Iowa and they have a lot of cheap monk. They're, they're even cuter than squirrels. Have you seen a cheap monk? They're like little like this and they have a little line behind their back. They're cute little things. And... Uh, so they're in Iowa though, but if you know this, a, a chipmunk, if, you, if they are in your backyard, they're actually digging holes in your yard. So you walk in, in your yard and there is a hole. You can, you can step on the hole and break your ankle if you're 50 and above, right? So <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, so, so my father-in-law traps them and take them out of way and then let them go. So one day I was there, I saw him doing that. I was like, what if, what if I got like a BB gun and shoot them? I know, I know, easy, easy, okay, you're Okay. And then he was like, Sam, do whatever. We just need to ca catch them. And I was like, all right. So I go and I get nuts, right? And I put the nuts in the, in the place over there. And I'm on their porch with a BB gun. Now, if you know me, the odds of me hitting a, a, a chipmunk with a BB gun is next to zero, right? So it's very next to zero. I'm a horrible shooter. We never grew up with guns. There's something that we do in Brazil. So I, I, it's not, I never did that. So I don't know how to do it. Plenty stories of how bears shooting and stuff like that, whatever. And then so my father-in-law is like, good luck. If you can hit, if you can hit it, good luck. So I, I put it in and I'm in the park shooting. Pow, nothing, 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 nothing. Lord behold, I hit one. And I was like, oh my goodness, I thought the little thing is jumping and it's dying. And I was like, oh my, I started crying and Laura comes out and my father-in-law comes out. Like, Sam, you're such a softy. I was like, I don't understand. I just kill it. And then I went there and I touched the mouth. has that has like nuts on the, on the thing. Like, I was like, oh my goodness, what if, what if it's a mom? What if it's a mom? Like, you can't kill a mom. He's taking food for the babies in the thing. Like, you can't do that. Like, you know, the whole point of the story is that he was saying, Saving for later. That's the whole point of the story. <laughs> but you know, they are saving for later, which is a, something very important. But uh, another part of saving is it can be dangerous. You might have a Brazilian trying to BB gun you down. <laughs> but uh, but like, uh, so the whole point is that it, it, it's, saving is important for later. <clears throat> Most guys are thinking you're such a wimp. You know, it is important to, to, to be prepared for the future. You, you could save, uh, you know, the economy could go south in a hurry, which is true. We we might be living that right now. You could suffer for some catastrophic uh, uh, event, maybe a fire or a storm damage in your house. Maybe your employee restructure, eliminate some jobs and you earn the numbers. You could develop some sort of health problems and you might be disabled. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But it's not only about saving, it is also creating the IMF emergency fund that is that will help you deal with emergencies in your life saving is important for the things you have planned and prepared for the future some things that can you can foresee it but emergency fund is important for you for emergency sake right and I think on a Wednesday night we were talking about here last week about what is a good debt and a bad debt what is some of the things that you should get in debt with that will be good for you and some things that you should not we talked about a credit score and how that helps you or not help you how the APR the percentage rate uh, affects you and doesn't affect you we talked about all of that but one of the things that we talked about is it is like a, some, some this idea of what are some of the what, what is some good debt and bad debt and, and some of the things that it is necessary is the wants and, and versus needs right uh, what is some of the things that is like needs you have to have in some wants so we talked about that on Wednesday night and, and I need to talk about you what emergency is and not for a second here like buying a TV for Super Bowl is not an emergency right it was for me uh, back in the day but uh, it is no longer the case right so that's not buying a big TV it is not an emergency right uh, 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 buying a new iPhone is not an emergency uh, those are things that you should save and be able to invest on emergency is maybe uh, uh, out of a sudden is middle of summer uh, for you guys and, and 
AC goes out, then, then you should, that's the emergency. Something that needs to be taken care of right here and right now. If it was in the Rose's household, we don't, we don't care. We will be 92 degrees in there. That's fine. But, right? Maybe it's the HVAC, the furnaces. Maybe the furnace is in the middle of winter. If it breaks, we're going to freak out. We got to take care of it. That's emergency. Maybe your car broke down and you need to fix it right away. That's emergency. Maybe the roof has a leak or, 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 or uh, uh, you know, that's emergency. That, that's something that you didn't foresee. That You couldn't foresee that and it happens, right? Uh, 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 but uh, maybe you need, so you say, Pastor Sam, what about changing my tires? No, changing your tires is not an emergency. You should be saving. We all know that at some point your tire is going to go out. You should be saving a little bit uh, so that you can be able to to uh, to pay for the tires. So saving is important, but having also an emergency fund, it is also important for you to be able to deal with those unexpected bills that comes to us all the time. Emergencies are those things that we need to take care of right here and right now. But see, you know the thing that we, we miss is when we don't save and we don't have an emergency fund, we miss, we miss on opportunities. How many of us have missing on a good opportunity in life, maybe to build memory, maybe to build relationships, maybe just to, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to build for the future uh, because we don't have a save, though we don't have an emergency fund. Th think for a, mess, for a moment, like think uh, something as simple as a family vacation. Maybe your, whole, uh, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, and your parents decided to go on a, on a family vacation. They invited you, let's go as a family, create some good memories. It's a great opportunity for you to, to reconnect with some people but you can't because you never saved in order to be able to take part of an opportunity like that maybe a friend is opening a business and you think it's a good business it's a worthwhile business journey going to and you he invited you to be part of it and you don't because you never saved in order to be able to be part of something like that can we make religious maybe like can we make about church maybe uh, the church is having a missions trip with something uh, that have that works in church i'm very passionate about and we're getting to the point where i want to go we know that samuel dalla from india is, is watching us right now he's always watching us uh so hi samuel dalla and and uh, i would love for us to go to india and to visit him to visit his church to bless his church to serve his people and, and maybe a pastor gives you the opportunity to join him on a mission trip. And, and it's a great opportunity for you to advance the kingdom of God. For you to grow in your faith. But you're not able to go because you never saved up in order to be able to go to a mission trip. Which is something that God has called all of us to do. When we don't save. When we don't have emergency funds. We lose. We miss on opportunity. On great opportunities. And let me tell you this very important statement. Saving is the answer to so many of life's problems and frustrations. I can guarantee you that if you'd have saved a little extra money, you would be a very less frustrated and you have a, with a little bit extra, less problems in life. And the, in the Bible, we have a great example of how important it is to save. Right? In Genesis chapter 41, we are told the story of Joseph. And uh, the ruler of Egypt, uh, diligently, where he diligently stockpiled grain to prepare for a famine that was ahead. He was creating an emergency fund. He was saving and creating an emergency fund after that in order to take care of the people. The family eventually came. The famine eventually came and people were in need. And Egypt was able to, to, to offset the need of people because Joseph, who heard from God, did what God asked him to do, which was to stockpile. Look what Genesis chapter 41 verse 54 is saying. Then the seven years of famine began. The, the emergency began. The, 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 the difficult time began. Just as Joseph had predicted. The famine also st struck all the surrounding countries. But throughout Egypt there was plenty of food. See, here's one of the problems I see that we have uh, when it comes to our own personal life. Unlike D Joseph, we never think, we never predict, we never think something bad is going to happen to us. Right? Most of us are like, oh, you know what? Uh, nothing bad is going to happen. We'll be okay. We'll be all right. We never predict it. But reality is that you can't predict what is in the future. You're not God. You can only trust God for the future. And God is telling us in his word that if you want to be ready for the future, you ought to save. You ought to prepare yourself for it. It is safe to say that people who save are never sorry. But people who don't save will be sorry sooner or later. Enough about savings. I think I've already beat that horse down. Let's talk about investment. 
We need to think about investing. And I think in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 25, we talked about last week, and, and I'm going to bring it up again this week. It, 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 the story of these three servants who were given money by their master to manage the money, and, and, and while the, the manager, was, the, 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 the owner was gone for a trip. And in this story, there's two characters. There's the whole digger, the whole diggers, and the investors. Whole diggers, not gold diggers, right? Whole diggers and the investors. Two of the servants get the money that they're given. They invest the money and they return to the master with, uh, with some, uh, 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 some extra, with, with, uh, with some, you know, there's some return to it. And the master praised them. But one of them, they, he digged it down, say, dig it down, never invested, and returned to the, to, the, to the master what he was given. And the master was furious. The whole digger got a little spanking that day. And the investors got a praise. God wants to do our best with what he gives us. And when it comes to money, that means investing. At First Timothy chapter 6 verse uh, uh, 19, which is not, is not up there. I, I'm just bringing it up to you. God talks about the importance of investing in his kingdom. Uh, when you invest in God's kingdom, you have return. When you invest of your money right here, right now on planet earth. When you put it on maybe uh, on a market or maybe investing by buying a, a house that you're going to rent. Or so whatever it was you choose to in invest. You got some return to it. In First Timothy chapter 6 verse 19, God tells us that. When you invest in the kingdom of God, we get in return. So it's not only about investing, it's about what are you investing into. If you, get, if you invest in the kingdom of God, you will, you will reap rewards, not only for this life, but also in the life to come. So investing is a spiritual thing, not only a financial thing for here and for now. What are you investing in? Is it only material things? Or are you investing also in the kingdom of God? A simple way of thinking about investing is this. Investing is putting your money, putting money away. Now, believe that in the future, we'll get back more than what you put it away. That's the whole point of investing is that right now you have set aside the amount of money that you put it to, that you invest somewhere. And later on, you're going to get more than what you invested. But then you talk about, uh, you get there because of interest, right? The reason you get more is because of interest. And, and interest is the money that's paid to you for putting your money in a financial institution. You get the money, you put it in a financial institution, and because you trust them, you get it in return, right? This is a financial uh, thing one on one. We all know this, we all understand this, and we all participate in this in one way or another. And, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about investing in a second here. But here's the thing, it works the same way in the kingdom of God. If we invest in the kingdom of God, I can tell you that he will contribute, he will, you will get more than why you put it there because God is faithful and he's abundant God and he's a generous God towards his people. But it's not only about investing and then uh, having interest to work for you in order for you to have a, um, a better financial situation. There is something else that is also important which is called compound interest. Interest is good. But what is better is this thing called compound interest. The simple ways of understanding this is interest on top of interest, right? In other words, you get interest not on the original uh, investment that you make. You get on the original investment and on the interest that you gain. Compound interest. Albert Austin, Albert, Albert Einstein, a very smart guy, he said this. I thought it was funny. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Right? I think like I think that's a, I think that's a pretty cool and 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 and, and wise way of of thinking about a compound interest. So I'm sure you'd have rather. I'm sure that you here this morning would rather earn it, earn it than pay it. Right? Wouldn't you want to do that? Right? You want to earn it more, not pay it more. So here's, so here's some things for you to remember when it comes to uh, investing. Very important things for you to in, in, understand. Start now. Start now. You, you need to start right here, right now. You, but here's the thing. Before you start investing, you have to get your budget life kind of figure out. You got to figure out your debt situation. Then, then you got to save and have that, com that savings figure out a little bit. And, and most people, financial guys would say, you have to have three months of your bills saved in order to have this nice saving. And then after that, you got to have a couple of more months of, for emergency funds. So you talk about five to six uh, of your months 
of bills in order to save, in order for you to be able to then start investing well, making your work, your money works for you. But uh, start now, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you need to start small. Uh, that's fine. But start as soon as you can. Start it. Don't postpone it for tomorrow. Start investing today. The second thing I think you need to understand is not only that you need to start now, is that you need to diversify. A lot of people, when it comes to investing, they do that on their own without uh, advising uh, some, some good financial advisors. You know? So they go, they get all their money and put it in one basket. Like you don't put all your egg in one basket. You put in many different baskets. And, and you need people who has uh, the understanding and the wisdom in order to be able to guide you uh, through, through the investing process of it. So that's why here we have, uh, you know, we partner with, uh, with Dusty Hostetler, someone who loves God, who loves God's people, who loves this church and wants to see God's people thrive so that they will make a difference in the world, right? Uh, so uh, Dusty, uh, he's a financial advisor who has helped us through this process. On Wednesday night, he comes here, which is something that he could charge, he, he could charge, but he doesn't do that for us because he loves this place and he gives us financial advice for free in order for us to do well and to live well. But it's not only Dusty that we have at Delaware Christian Church. We have another lady called Amanda Mori, too, that she comes here. She's part of us, who is a financial advisor. She would love to, to guide us and, and help us into figuring out the best way to diversify our, our, our investments. But it's not only about uh, uh, starting now and diversifying either. It is about listening to the right people. I mean, so many, so many people out there is not uh, advising you for your benefit. They're advising you for their own personal benefit. Even though they are a financial advisor, they're, they're, they're in the game for themselves. So that's why we need to pay attention to who we listen to, right? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6 t t tells this. The words of the wicked are like a murder ambush. But the words of the godly save lives. There are plenty of wicked people out there in the world who are trying to swiddle you out of your money. There are others who like to manage your money for you, but they're managing for you for their benefits, not for your benefit. And I think here's why the kingdom of God is so amazing, so good. And here's why uh, at Delaware Christian Church, I, I, you have heard me say this before and I'll repeat it here. We want to be a hub. We want to be the place where we can get all the resources that we need as God's people in order for us to be plugged into one another so that we can offset and help each other in our journey. Right? If you're needing a financial advisor, why go in the world out there to get one if you can go in the church and trust someone who are godly, who loves God, who love God's people, who love God's church, and who is ready, who, to, and who understand that your investment is not only for you, not only for your future, but also to advance the kingdom of God. So be careful to who you listen to. Another thing you need to be careful in this process of investing is this. There is no such a thing as, as a get rich quick schemes. They're, they're, those things just doesn't exist, right? Uh, uh, there are people that run into money at times or someone who parents did, did really well and left some money to them. Or, or maybe someone, uh, you know, uh, work hard, a grandpa work hard in his life and build, build a fortune and then kids get. I understand that's all possible. Uh, uh, my kids are not getting that, by the way. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> but uh, reality is there's no such a thing as, as re get rich, quick scheme. If someone is coming to you with this great opportunity, with a great idea, but encourage you to act hastily, Run away from it. If you, don't, if you can't do your research on it, run away from it. Uh, you know, if someone is pressuring you, hasting you to make a decision, back off. Do your homework. Don't fall for it. I think we need to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more biblical about how we we foresee our future and how we foresee our fortune and getting and getting money and being successful. Proverbs chapter 25, 21 verse five tells us this: Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hastiness shortcuts leads to poverty. I mean, I, I, we live in a world that is all about hastiness and shortcuts. That's why maybe we see so many people living in poverty. I, I believe that God's word tells us, listen, good planning. Do some good planning. Look at the goals of your life and how to achieve that goals. Think forward about the future. That is important. Good planning is important. But not only good planning, hard work. 
That's one of the, the things that uh, maybe I'm being a little bit passionate about this part here because uh, 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 as a foreigner, I came to America and I work hard to be here today. I wasn't dropped from heaven right here, right now, right? I came here without English, without money, no family, no friends. God blessed me for sure. There's miracles in my life that comes because of God. But that was something that, that, that was always ahead of me, that I was taught young from God's word, not from the world perspective, from God's word, that good planning, hard work leads to prosperity. There's no such a thing as get-rich-quick schemes. When you get to the burning urge to invest in something, that's, to invest, uh, in something that seems ridiculous, uh, overvalued, pay attention, say no to it. It is one of the most important verses right here for us as followers of Jesus. If you are working hard and if you are eating from your sweat, guess what? God is blessing you. You feel blessed. Don't feel like that working hard is a curse. Working hard is a blessing, is a bless of God to you. Can I wrap this message up? And I want to, uh, because um, uh, we all, everybody works and saves and invests. And in, in order to think about this, this statement right here, the golden ears. How many of us have heard about this statement? The golden ears, right? Don't we work hard for, for good golden ears? Isn't that how it goes, right? Can, can, can I tackle that a little bit and, and maybe poo-poo in it for a second? Can, can I do that for a second? You know, th those years when, uh, golden years, the years when we retire and live out of, of the remain of our lives with less pressure and less responsibility than we had when we were working 40, 50, or 60 hours a week. Obviously, as we save and invest during our young years, we have an eye on those golden years. We are thinking about them and making the decisions, uh, decisions that we hope will leave us in good financial shape. So then when we get there, we got an easy going. If you have, have you know, uh, that is important for sure. I understand that if you have, if you have ever met someone who, uh, who, were, who is broken their retirement life is a tragic thing. I remember listening to my dad say, I'm going to save for the future because I don't want to die poor. And uh, I've seen many of my family members die poor. And I know that that can be a very sad thing. So I'm not saying be negligent here, being irresponsible. But, but for just a moment here, I want us to, 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 to think, to stop and think, uh, to stop uh, thinking financially about the golden years and, and instead think philosophically about the golden years. I, I think we need to shift here this thinking for a second from financial to philosophical. There is a mindset that sees retirement as the time of life when we are finally able to get out from under all of our work, all of our obligation and just live a life Full invested on self indulgence, right? It's like uh, you know I have paid my I have paid my dues now. Now I'm gonna self indulge myself. You know I will do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want. Uh, you know as much as I want, and everything else gets shoved in the side, right? Most people think of retirement is that. It is this ability to do what we want, when we want, as much as you, we want, and leaving everything behind. That sounds good, right? But unfortunately, the church often suffer as a result of it. The kingdom of God suffer as a result of it. For example, how many times you have, if you talk to, to pastors out there, how many times you have heard pastor talk about that because they go to a teacher who has been teaching in the school district and, and she or he is now retired and the pastor is like, hey, I'd love for you to join us to teach a small group or to teach a specific class or, 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 or to help on, on the kids area so you can teach kids about God's word. And the person turns to you like, wow, we, I already did that on, on my young years. I'm retired now. I can, uh, now is the time for me to indulge myself. Maybe you are retired, there is a retired police officer, the pastor comes to him and says, Hey sir, you know, could you join the security team so we can protect God's people from, from the things that happens out there? Would you, with your expertise, come and join us and, and help us into uh, advancing the kingdom of God by protecting God's people? The guy's like, oh no, the girl said, no, no, I'm not doing that already. Serve my community already, pay all the dues. And, and, and you know, if you talk to pastors out there, there are many stories of retired individuals 
who expand, exp, expand uh, 60, 40, 60 hours a week golfing uh, on, on the golf course uh, and is not ready to and is not contributed to the kingdom of God. That's Here's the difference between Jim, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, so, the, so here's the thing. Here at Delaware Christian Church, it is not about golfing. It's about serving God. And this, uh, here at Delaware Christian Church, it's not about uh, your age. It is about your heart. And Jim has a great heart. And, and he not only plays golf through the week, but he also finds time to do what? To come and serve us by playing on the worship team. That's the kind of retirement that pleases God. That's the kind of retirement that, 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 that honors God, that honors people, and, and that helps us continue to fight God's kingdom in the world. So we are not supposed to retire from serving the Lord. For the op opposite of that, we have many examples of the Lower Christian Church. And I want you to continue to build on that example. God has given you gifts. God has given you talents. God has given you resources. And we ought to put it all together in order to fight His kingdom. My plea is for you to understand the value you have to the kingdom in your golden ears. You bring knowledge and wisdom and experience to the table, all of which are necessary in every church, especially at Delaware Christian Church. You have mature. And there are people like me and Laura and other couples and other individuals who need to grow and mature in Jesus. So we need your help. You likely have people skills and leadership skills that have been uh, honed over the, the, the decades of your life, of your professional life. And you ought to impart wisdom to those who are coming along. I can think of few uh, greater tragedies than for people with so much to offer the kingdom of God, to just check out and live solely to themselves. Can I say this a little punch? Getting old, getting older, getting wiser, getting more knowledge does not give you the right to be selfish. As it is if we have the, uh, it feels like sometimes we have the battalion of soldiers they have turned to their weapons in and, and they are playing cards in the barricades instead of joining the fight, the war. Instead of teaching, guiding, giving wisdom and discernment for kids like me that need so much. Don't be one of them. As you're young right now, don't think of retirement as a time for you to indulge yourself and to give, uh, give, uh, give everything up just to serve yourself. Don't do that. Think about it as, uh, as preparing yourself to be able to contribute even more in the kingdom of God in the future. Even if you're saving and investing accumulates a mountain of money, there's still a spiritual war going on and you are needed. Can I say that again? Even if you have all the riches of the world, there is still plenty of our spiritual war going on. And we need everyone to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom of God in Delaware Christian Church, in Columbus, in Ohio, in the U.S., and in the world. Maybe we get to join Samuel Dalla in the war, spiritual war in India as a church in Delaware. Because we, we are not selfish. We are saving and investing and understanding that our lives matter for much more than here and now, but through all eternity. I would like to transition to communion time with that thought. 